here we go. I wonder how many people say that specifically because of that game, and I wonder how many people say that and they don't know why they're saying it. They just heard it said heard so it. many times. Yeah, yeah. Here, here we go. Here we go. Like, I wonder how many people actually know what that is from. You know, like the the source or the character, even the game. Let's start with just the game. I know like the I wonder, game. Yeah, I wonder how many people know. Like here we go. Like what that's from, where it emanated from. Because I know it's super. I hear people say it all the time, and I'm like, I wonder if you actually know where where that's from. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some people that wear shirts that say like Led Zeppelin, and they've never heard, listened to, or own anything ever created by Led Zeppelin ever. But I will say some of their album artwork is fantastic. I get that. They're probably the ones that always yell Freebird. Yeah, oh at the man. at the concert. Yeah, if too. you're that person, I don't like you. Is he and is an as an individual? Oh, I don't like that. As an individual, well, Jen Hogan knows. Well done, Jen Hogan. Nailed it. Oh yeah, good to see you guys. You Thank get you. a free show. Thank you get a free show. You get a free show. <laughs> you get a free show. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out, man. We most certainly appreciate it. Kyle Nunez, good to see you again, sir. Matthew McIver in the house. Great to see you guys, Jen Hogan. Always, always awesome to see some incredible yeah. names, and thank you guys. Kyle, for, thanks for joining for us a little bit earlier. Yeah, we were we were on the Orlando. I saw you in there. We were on the Orlando shit show. It's the title uh, with our good yeah. friend Patty. Patio furniture. furniture. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. Uh, so uh, so we were we j- we joined uh, Patricio. We joined him, and we joined one, two, three, four other uh, creators and podcasters. Man. Uh, which was which was kind of crazy. It was it was nuts, man. It was definitely I shared it on my page, and then I had to adjust the the description. I put like rated R, and then we like, started really getting into this stuff. So I just took it off my page, one hundred percent. Not only gone. was it rated R, it was yeah. kind of disgusting. Yeah, at, it at was it, it was getting kind of bad. <laughs> so let's say hi, Matthew Pfeiffer. Good to see you, Lynn Floyd. Good to see you, and thank you guys for joining us tonight. Let's go ahead and rock it. Are we good? Everything good? Are we are we money? We can take away the backdrop. Let's do it. Hello. What's up, everyone? And thank you for joining us. It is a Monday night. My name is Billy Floyd, and that is the Commodore. That's right, baby. Uh, we are the Kitchen Killers. Thank you for joining us this evening. Classified as a touring acoustic duo, crashing kitchens around the country. We do it every Friday, and we do it for free. And this Friday, we are waiting on a confirmation from our host. I actually, it is the ball is bouncing in my court. I'm going to reach out to Jennifer Ward Hall, a fantastic individual and incredible creator. Uh, we are supposed to be crashing her kitchen this Friday, so hopefully, we'll be able to uh, make that all happen. And, uh, and we will be bringing a show to you uh, from a remote kitchen this Friday, which I'm really excited about. Mm. Uh, huge, splashy birthday to my man Francisco. Uh, if you guys don't remember Francisco, he came on the show about a year ago, created some absolutely incredible food with us. Uh, he, was in the, he was in the kitchen uh, with some good friends. He had a sous chef that evening. Was that the Arepas Splash? Yeah, that was Arepas. Splash. Yeah. Splash. That's, That's all you had. Splash. That's, I, splash I, I just connected that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So thank you guys for joining splash. us, man. We definitely appreciate it. Let's get to it because we have a <laughs> special guest joining us tonight. Um, and we're going to bring her on in just a couple minutes. She's actually checking out some fresh French bread that she just finished and was cooling. Yeah. Which I'm excited to hear how, how she did because I love bread. And like French bread especially, mm. out freaking standing. They sound so French. Well, they sound so French. I love when French bread talks. She has made French bread before, and I'm, I'm truly interested. And I know she's an incredible person. We, were, we went through her dot com, and we read a little bit about her. Yeah. Uh, what I thought we would do live is we're going to Google Melinda M. Snodgrass. We're just going to Google it. We're going to see what the Google box tells us about Melinda gonna, M. Snodgrass. Have you ever Googled yourself and learned some things about you that the internet has to share? I you know, like Googled I don't think the I've Commodore ever, or Googled, Googled your name. myself. No. It's, it's, it's interesting. It is an interesting thing to do. Can we not do me live? We don't have to do that live. That's no big <laughs> deal. I'm worried, especially after our, after our, after our show today with Patricio. Oh I definitely boy. am a oh little boy. apprehensive to Google the Commodore. I'm not necessarily sure, yeah. <laughs> especially as one that word. Is a, that's a <laughs> – I don't want to be tied to that. That's right. In any way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get going before we bring Melinda on. I'm uh, really excited to have her on the show. She's an incredibly accomplished uh, young lady. She's done some amazing things in her life, and I'm really, really excited uh, to chat with her about her latest ventures, some previous ventures, um, why she chose to change direction in those ventures, and I really am excited to find out how that French bread came out. Like That's, that's what I'm really excited about. Um, uh, not, not to mention all the other things, but man, she, she got me. She got my heart and soul. She's tugging on my, my French bread heartstrings. With her Melinda M. Snodgrass <laughs> fingers. She's got me right here. So uh, All of her accomplishments <laughs> when you're like, just show me the bread. Yeah, show, show me the bread. 
I want the French <laughs> All bread. All these incredible things that she's done and she continues <laughs> to do. And I'm like, I'm. But I'm just can you make bread? <laughs> oh, she Is can make. It amazing. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us. Last Monday we were really fortunate. We had Cambry Lovesey, uh, who's a, a singer songwriter, a, a Nashville recording artist, singer songwriter <laughs> from Canada. Uh, she was absolutely incredible. She's been playing for ten years since the age of eleven years old. She's been trained and she's found proficiencies in a lot of different styles of music and instrumentation. We listened to a bunch of music. She played us three songs. We got her to play us three songs. Uh, she wanted to. Oh, yeah, she definitely did, which was super, super. I'm glad we asked her because I never want to be like, I don't, I don't want to be too demanding. Like, you like, already, yeah, yeah, like, I guess, I'll you know, play another fine. one. But she was so sweet. She was absolutely incredible. Um, like she played Runaway Queen, Runaway Queen, which is her newest release written by uh, Sean Gassaway and Pam Shane, recorded in Nashville, which was super cool. She also played Shotgun, which was an original that she wrote off her album Kiss My Boots. I love that And name. then she did, uh, I know it was really good. And then Kiss she did boots. Temporary Love. We polled the audience, uh, whether it was a cover or an original. She rocked original. She did... <sighs> Uh, it was an original that, and that was what she wanted. That was her favorite. That is her That's favorite. That's my original. favorite too. It was Cambry, really good. If you're listening, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Cambry to it was a couple absolutely times fantastic. After the show. What's up, Aaron? Good to see you, my dude. Oh, Aaron comes in. Hashtag Grundle Chat. Oh jeez, <laughs> it's happening again. Oh god, dude, that avatar <laughs> looks nothing like you, Aaron. That doesn't look like you at all. I don't know who that guy is, but it's definitely not you. Aaron's a liar. He's a liar. now now. Oh yeah, I see what. That's right. Uh, so thank you very much to Cambry Lovesey from joining us last Monday. It was super, super cool. Um, we opened the show with our wrap-up. We did a little Through the Fear, and then we ended it with Toilet Paper Jesus uh, Both great by songs. Thomas Carter Rochester. Um, so thank you guys for joining us last Monday. We had the poll up last Tuesday. We did an all-cover poll. Was that last Tuesday we did an all-cover poll? Right. Yeah. That's so right. So the first time we ever did an all-cover poll. Thank you guys very much uh, for all the votes, all the uh, the inclinations for thank us to play and continue uh, to play these covers. So we, we had a lot of fun on that. On that, we had Keep the Wolves Away by Uncle Luscious, as uh, as Shelly typed out, Uncle Luscious. Uh, we had Crazy by Gnarls Barkley. I remember when. That's right. Yeah. We also had Somewhere With You by Kenny Chesney. Freshman by The Verve Pipe. And our winner, winner, chicken dinner was Drive off the Make Yourself album by Incubus. My favorite band of all time. Yeah. And on one of, probably my favorite album. Yeah. Of theirs, yeah, it was fantastic. The entire uh, that's that's one of those albums that I'll still say it. I can listen from beginning to end and just oh, let it recycle the whole album down. over and over again. It's outstanding, man. Um, we did flip the pick. We did a little drift slide collide for you. That was one a little D DSC for you. Thursday was prep for Friday. This past Friday was absolutely incredible, man. We were really fortunate. We had Josh Mullis and his sous chef Tally the Snack Jimenez join us for that's right, Jimenez. The snack. Join us for Friday show. We did the Tally bourbon the snack. The bourbon glazed salmon on the mm -hmm. bed of fresh mm -hmm. fettuccine Alfredo with the sauteed slash steamed asparagus. Mm -hmm. Then we had mm -hmm. the multi cheese Texas mm -hmm. toast kind the of five. I don't the know five if it was te is it Texas it was, toast? It was Texas toast. What it, what is Texas uh, toast? Just the thickness. Know. What makes it Texas? I toast? I think it's the thickness. Is that what it is? It says it on the box. We're asking questions now. Now Shelly's in Texas. She might be able to let oh. us know why we is it called a, Texas toast? Is it the thickness, the type of bread? Because it can't I be can't called Texas toast much. just because we put cheese on it. That can't be right. That can't be right. Uh, there has to be some some other some other no, no, criteria. No, there's, there's other Texas toast that doesn't have cheese on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is, is it the type it's of bread? Is it box. the thickness? Is it how it's prepared? Like, yeah, it's in a different box. I think it says a, Texas I think it's toast the on it. I think it's the it. thickness. I think that's the. I've that's had some the thick variable. cut French toast. Was that thick cut French Texas toast? Thick cut French Texas toast, or is could, it? It, it could have been thick cut Texas French it toast. Been Texas French bread, Texas, Texas French toast. Texas French, Texas French toast. I don't know. Because if you say it's already thick cut, if thick cut is the criteria that it takes to be Texas, then it's already French. I gotta cut. know. Yeah, we're going. We're going to find out. Texas toast. That's right. Oh yeah, it's the size, baby. It's all about the size. Apparently, is what Shelley Wheeler says. Oh well, yeah, you know. hands down would have been Why a great do they cover. Call it oh, Texas toast may have first been created after a bakery of thicker slices of bread. Thicker slices, Jim. Too thick for the toaster. That's what it is. If it's too thick for the toaster, it's Texas. It's Texas toast, which can't that be toasted in a toaster. You need a special toaster. Sense. Now they have wide slot toasters that they make. You can get toasters with wide slots. Does that now take away the ability to you not be able to toast it in a toaster? Now it's not Texas toast anymore. Man, there's a lot of Texas toast that got there's really a lot of, mad. There's a lot of modifiers. Like, You're taking away my identity. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So, so this is what we actually talk about. Just absolute <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, so last Friday was awesome, man. Thank you guys uh, for joining us. We had a fun show. We had a really great time. Uh, Josh and Tally absolutely killed it. It was just a super, super blast. Um, and again, we did the bourbon, the, the bourbon 
a glazed salmon on fettuccine with asparagus, cheese, and garlic bread. Perfectly All cooked. provided by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Absolutely outstanding. Hashtag Publix, mm-hmm. where are you at? Mm-hmm. Um, this Saturday was super it cool. It actually is a pleasure. We to got shop to see there. some really cool people this Saturday. We we spent we spent a small amount of time being extremely productive. We got to hang out and meet for the first time Ken from Rockstar Axe Throwing and made made some some great community connections yeah, that yeah, we yeah. didn't know existed. Yeah, it was it was really cool. What was your experience at Rockstar Axe Throwing? How did you feel walking in? Like when you like what was your what was your idea of what you were going into compared to what it actually when was? I, when I first thought of an axe throwing place, I thought of outdoors. Gotcha. And then it said University something. University it's on Plaza, Technological Avenue, yeah. Plaza or something. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, I know that area. Yep. First watch. watch. And uh, it, yeah, it's right next door to first, first watch. Oh, yeah, baby. Hashtag first watch. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I went there. Back to throwing axes. Anyway, back to throwing <laughs> axes. But we entered we entered in the axe throwing place and and it was superbly clean. Yeah. It was true. very clean. That's true. Um very simple. There was a lot of wood. There was a lot of wood everywhere. Um, but it was very clean. That was my first impression of that place. Yes, it was. Very, very really clean, organized. Clean. And and we talked to Ken for a while and t- uh, Ken for 15 years was a traffic engineer. Yeah. So uh, when you would drive up to the red lights that you now see, the, the current red lights, not the ones with the loops in the road, but the ones with kind of the cameras on top, uh, he worked on programming uh, traffic lights to recognize other traffic coming in for what duration of time. The green lights are green. The yellow lights are yellow. The red lights are red. The snozberries taste like snozberries. He did all of that programming, and he did it for 15 years. So from, from traffic engineering to axe throwing. And what what happened? He went to a bachelor party in yep. Canada. Yep. Apparently, axe throwing originated in Car- Canada because yeah, they yeah. like they like throwing axes anyway. So they later, Aaron, take it easy, brother. They just made kind of a sport a sport on it. Yeah, it was like a sport. There's like a league that you can belong to. So he like went to he went to this uh, this this bachelor party, threw axes, had a fantastic time, loved it, and was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. There's none down here. In That's Florida. what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go to we the Sunshine some, State. We need to make some. Which is a hodgepodge of incredible people from all over the world that you know yeah. in, that that, that uh, inhabit Florida. So yeah. they, he created Rockstar Axe Throwing right uh, right here in Orlando by yeah. UCF, which was super cool, nice and clean. We walked through the entire process of how he changes at his boards, how they created the targets, the distance, the different types of axes that they had. I want to say they probably had between six to eight different types of axes that you oh, can yeah. throw. Oh yeah, you know, and I've seen some videos online where people are like throwing axes and they're flying back at people, and people are jumping out of the way. That was my very first question to him: Do you have a lot of bounce backs? And he said, and so we specifically talked about that video. And th- if you guys have not seen, there's a video of a girl and she's throwing an axe. It hits the rubber ground, bounces up, hits the 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 wooden background, and then comes right back at her, and she ducks out of the way just in time to get away from this axe, making it seem like this is a commonality and this happens a lot, where specifically that video was taken on purpose and that's what she was trying to do. She was trying to throw it at the ground to bounce it. Yeah, she was trying to throw it into the ground where it would bounce and and stick in the wood. And the really bad part is that her axe coach who worked there was encouraging it. He was Bad recommending coach. that she do this. Bad coach. So I will say, I didn't have an experience like that at all at Rockstar Axe Throwing. It was super, super cool. We had I got zero bounce backs to where we had to jump out of the way to remove ourselves from an impending doom. I got pretty close to the ground a couple times. Apparently, I learned I learned that day, I am not good at throwing axes. I it's love not, it. It's not my forte. I think about, bu- I if think you about notice, buying axes if a you, lot. If you look in the video, we made, we made a, a short little video about our experience at, at, at uh, Rockstar Axe Throwing. If you look in the video, there's a point in the middle of the video where an axe hits the board, but it doesn't stick. It just kind of bounces off. That's the closest that I got to, <laughs> to hitting the board. You did hit that was first. That was my, that was my axe. <laughs> All the <laughs> other ones were Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a good time, dude. I just did the filming. I'm so like, awesome. I'm done. <laughs> you keep throwing because you're having a good time. I'm just going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> he was the governor. was the first one to go. I'm like, knock it out, dude. He's like, okay. And I'm taking a bunch of video. And he, the, a couple minutes later, he's like, all right, you're up. I'm done. I'm out. And none <laughs> of that video, the, uh, the only shot of, of any video of me <laughs> was the one that missed the, the thing. I thought it was cool. And it kind of went with the music. Dude, we so had a I good time, it. man. It was awesome. We taught, we learned about all the different types of axes, all the different ty- how how they build it, where they came from, how they put everything together the logic behind it the scoring behind it the distance behind it the community behind it it was really cool and as we're leaving because we always like to shake hands and see if we can set something up for the future he says to us i was actually thinking of partnering with my friend chuck over at get messy barbecue and having a collaborative event and i was like 
really? I was like, we're actually headed to meet up with Chuck right now. Uh, we had Chuck on uh, as, an, as an interviewee uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We Absolutely about fantastic. He's right down the road. We're going to see, we're going to see Chuck right now. I don't mean to in, in invite ourselves to your event. Because uh, we had already talked about playing there. I was like, but how cool would it be to have some axes, some barbecue, and some live music? I mean, how much more, how much more burly how man it. do you get? I you love know? how you phrase it. You yeah. don't invite yourself, but like, how cool would it be? Yeah. How cool would it be? <laughs> it would be fantastic, wouldn't it, Ken? <laughs> wouldn't it, Ken? <laughs> say yes. Say That's yes. right. <laughs> oh, Mandy. I recognize Mandy. I recognize you, Mandy. Oh, She's boy. a troublemaker right there. Oh, boy. So we really, and then let me bring all these guys on real quick. Uh, Aaron. Uh, we hung out uh, with Aaron on the Orlando Shit Show today. Absolutely fantastic. It was captained by the incredible patio yep, furniture, yep. Patricio Solano, actually in here currently. With a short stand-in from Tanner. Uh, with a he very short stand-in from like Tanner. That seat, he didn't though. last in the long very long. It seemed like he couldn't um, talk. And we had our, our, token, our, our token female of the day. We're going <laughs> to... Yep. Uh, that is Mandy. <laughs> Mandy, it was fantastic to that meet you. And name. Mandy is uber nerd. Super, super nerd. Um, creator. She is in player. Fact. A Star Wars fan. She dated Boba Fett. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm just going to throw it out there. I know you guys think that's a big thing to say, but it's true. So thank you so much, for Patricia, for having Thanks us on today. Guys. What a blast, dude. It was an absolute blast. That was fun. If you guys ever have the opportunity to check out, watch, or go to an Orlando shit show, I will say hands down, do it, man. It's absolutely fantastic. Prepare yourself because the creative wit it needs to be right on the forefront of your mind. It's going to be funny. A lot of the time you won't know what's going on. Yeah, most of the time. And it... It could get a little weird. It's going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'll, it, I'll, it got I'll, weird. Yeah, yeah. It got weird. <laughs> there were a couple times it, was that a it got fun. really weird. It was a lot of fun. It was completely different from our show because that's not a family-friendly show. No, so no. I kept filtering ev no, no. pretty much everything I said naturally yeah, yeah. just because it's not a family-friendly show. Like, it's rated R to a degree NC-17. Yeah. Just prepare yourself. Yeah. But it is absolutely hilarious, and a huge shout-out uh, to, uh, to Patricio for inviting us on. Mandy, it was great to see you. We got to hang out with Aaron. We got to hang out with Tanner. Uh, we got to hang out with the incredible tech guru who also creates glasses out of bottles. Josh. Yep, I got his, num I got his number, and his fate were Facebook friends. And mm -hmm. there he is right there, the Ua. Joshua, Nunca. oh yeah, baby. I'd say the show was worthy of at least seven Grundle touches. That was our ongoing currency today. We were basing everything on the cost and the market rate of an individual <laughs> Grundle touch. And that, that's it. We're not, we're not going to go any further than that. It was a fantastic show. It was so much fun. I definitely recommend you guys knock that out. Uh, that, that was today. I actually oh skipped boy. over a couple days. Uh, so Saturday mm. was cool. We did Rockstar Axe ax Storing with Ken. We're putting uh, together a collaborative effort with him and Get Messy. Then we went to see Chuck over at Get Messy, and we had the, what is it, GNM dog, the Get Messy dog. Get Messy dog. Holy Toledo. That absolutely was a meal, bro. Absolutely incredible. It was a meal. I would say it had seven to eight ingredients on there. Not only did he have like Let's the creme de la creme all. when it comes to hot dogs, we, we had, had an all beef hot dog. All beef hot dog. It was on. It wasn't on a hot dog bun. Mm -hmm. It was on a hoagie roll. It was way too big to be on a hot right. dog bun. Yeah. By by soft by bread too. By bite number three. Bite number three, Jim. My entire it was hand, messy. All both of my hands messy. were covered in sauce it's and things. Literally I called getting messy. Everything like yeah, I was messy. Yeah. By bite three. If you're not messy not eating thing. this, you're not doing it right. I mean, yeah. how many? They they had, oh, not all so the good. ingredients were still in the bun. So we had the, the we had the all beef hot dog. I know we had some. We had cheese. So they had like there he had the melted cheese. There. cheese. There was coleslaw? there was there was coleslaw. There was pulled pork. Pulled pork. There were uh, there were fried pickles. There, there were jalapenos. Jalapenos and pork rinds. Pork rinds. It was fantastic. I think and that's it. Was there some brisket in there too? I felt like there was some brisket in there. I don't think so. Oh, I don't. I don't. It think was so. so good. It was in freaking incredible. Oh, oh yeah, the pork rinds put it over the top for me. Yeah, that was yeah. outstanding. The crunch. It was so good. So we got to hang out with Chuck over at Get Messy right after we threw axes uh, with Ken. So we're ta talking about putting a collaborative event together where it would be uh, and Get Messy is going to be catering it. Oh, I took a nap for four days. I'm still sleeping. Ken is going to be hosting it, and the Kitchen Killers are hopefully going to be there to be able to rock it out because uh, Ken is just such a cool dude, man. What an amazing individual. I was so thankful to meet him and not only pick his brain about – throwing axes, but everything else that he's done with his life, which is absolutely incredible. So it was really good. Saturday was a lot of fun, man. We had a really, really good time. Sunday was a chill day, man. We kind of took the – what's today? Is today Monday? What did I do Today's yesterday? Monday. 
I went to the beach, baby. I went to the beach and met up with some friends over at Coco. We hung out. We went to Tai Tai last night for some tasty Thai food, Thai. which is incredible. Thai it was Thai. awesome, man. I crashed it. I stayed at the Radisson. I'm a Radisson Rewards member now, which was a lot of fun. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, we, we all went out and we walked around the beach last night, which was super cool. It was really nice. It was nice and breezy. All the people uh, were the gone. the beach at night with the yeah. breeze. So quiet. And you so can just romantic. hear it. Was, it, was, it was very, yeah, for the so seven of us, romantic. it was incredibly romantic. Uh, but it, was, it was awesome. We did, we did the jetty first, and then we did the beach, which was really cool. It was really, really, really nice. How was your Sunday, sir? My Sunday was fantastic. I you went did over, some traveling yourself. I went over to St. Pete, and I nice. had I had breakfast with mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. I don't the know if you're here, but hi anyway. And we went to uh, we went we always go to First Watch. Yeah, mom always so gets good. the same thing. I've been to First Watch in a long time. I made fun of her for getting the same thing, and then I got the same thing. Yeah. Talking about making fun of somebody who's a, a woman of repetition. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so I saw mom, and then I, I went and I hung out with Jeff for a little bit. Nice. We looked at the car, got some lights turned off. I figured out I need a new seatbelt buckle. Okay. Um, then I then I, then I I heard Ashlyn and Matt were in town. Nice. Ashlyn and Matt were in town, so I had yeah, to go yeah. over to Dad's and we see We like Ashlyn, Ashlyn and Matt. They Ashlyn just welcomed Matt. a uh, new baby into the yes, world, right? Evie. 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 Aww, she is quite the delight. Name. When I entered the house... They let me in. Uh, Ashlyn let me in. She was holding Evie. Sure. And Evie was crying. She of was course. she was she was very loud. Um, and as I walked in, I sat down on the couch, and everybody left. <laughs> I was just sitting there looking at Bobby, like, what, what did, happened? Did I, <laughs> did I do something? <laughs> I know I I know I invited myself <laughs> over, but <laughs> damn. I mean, ouch. <laughs> How do I not take this personally? They all came back. Yeah, they of course. They're just messing with you. <laughs> She did take the, the screaming baby out of the room, so gotcha. I appreciated that. Maybe it was the screaming baby they were leaving and not you. Yeah. Well, they all went with the screaming baby. Oh, everybody loved you. They just left you by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Bobby Bobby was just... <laughs> They're all gone. You're just sitting on the couch alone. Good to see you. Okay, great to see everybody. I'm going to drive an hour and a half back to Orlando now. I'll yeah, okay. see you soon. So uh, the, today was, that was really fun. Yeah, that today was, fun. was really good, man. Uh, we rocked out the the, the Orlando shit show with uh, Patio Furniture, fantastic. Also, the host of a, a show called uh, With a Side of Chaos. We were there with Tanner as well. Uh, Tanner Kaiser, fantastic individual. So much fun. We had a, we had a blast today, dude. You and him could talk about oh Star my Wars God. all day. Yeah, for sure, dude. A hundred percent. We got maybe there even Mandy. They, maybe they, even Mandy because they she, started she's talking about Star Wars immediately, and I and I immediately remembered like every time they get together, they just start going, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, do I even need to be here? <laughs> oh, we had fun. Oh, so that brings us to right now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for the wrap up tonight. We have Melinda M. Snodgrass as our special guest. We have one song to play. Then we're going to be bringing her on. She is a New York Times bestseller. She is an incredibly gifted and skilled individual who can, I believe, she could live in the wild and she could build her own community with the amount of knowledge that she has in life surviving techniques, not only in creativity, but in leadership, most certainly. And I just found a really cool website where she wrote an episode for one of my favorite shows of absolute all time. I'm not going to say it yet. We're going to get into it. It's going to be so cool. Uh, she is incredibly talented. I'm always a little nervous to bring super, super talented people on because I don't feel that our talent matches their talent, and they're just incredibly talented. That's happened, that's happened the last couple shows. <laughs> it's we're, doing scary. It, we're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> it's kind of scary. I'm nervous. And she's, yeah, she's really pretty, too. She's beautiful and smart, and I'm intimidated. Don't judge me. So uh, let's get into it, man. We got one song we're going to play for you guys, and then we're going to be chatting with uh, Melinda M. Snodgrass. Uh, and I, I, don't even, I don't even know what title to give her. She has so many incredible titles. So you have to say them all. Uh, it's, it's the longest introduction of all time, and I'm excited to talk about it. But on top of that, we're going to find out how she did with her French bread, which I'm really excited about. So this next one is a Dave Matthews cover. I hope you guys are digging it, man. This one is called Where Are You Going? I hope you guys are having a fantastic night, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> Where I belong, I 
do know where you go is where I want to be. Where are you going? Where do you go? Are you looking for answers to questions under the stars? We'll live along the way. You are grown weary. You can rest with me till a brighter day when you're okay. I am no Superman. I have no answers for you. I am no hero, that's for sure. But I do know one thing where you are is where I belong. Where I want to be Where are you going Where do you go Yeah, baby. Groovy, groovy. That's such a good song, man. Huge shout out to Dave Matthews for writing a fantastic song. That's one of my favorites. One of my favorite songs that uh, the Dave Matthews band created. I, I really love playing that song. Yeah, it looks like fun. It's fun to play. Yeah, it looks like fun. And re real quick, I want to share uh, just yeah, a yeah. quote from Dave Matthews. Oh. It kind of applies to yeah, what yeah, we yeah. do. Turns out, not where, but who you're with, that really matters. I agree. 1,000%. Write that down. That's right. Write it down, Francisco. Happy Francisco. birthday, Francisco. Hope you're having a fantastic day, my man, and thank you for joining us. Uh, so, yes, Evan Lord. Hello. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Evan Lord. He cued the audience applause. I like. We're going to get Evan Lord one of those applause oh, signs that just kind of like flashes, applause, applause, and we'll just bring him at the, end of the sh at the end of the song. We'll just bring his video feed in with the applause light and then, you know, put him back into the green room so he can hang out. I see what's going on here. Thank you for joining us, Evan, and a huge shout-out to everybody for joining us this Monday night. We most certainly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, we are the Kitchen Killers. My name is Billy Floyd, and that is... The Commodore. That's right, baby. We are classified as a touring acoustic duo crashing kitchens around the country. We do it every Friday, and we do it for free. And tonight, we have an incredible guest joining us this evening. Her name is Melinda M. Snodgrass. Uh, she is an absolutely incredible individual. She is extremely talented. She wears crowns from incredible events all over the world, and tonight... She has made some incredible French bread that I'm really excited to talk about. Not only that, but we're going to Google Melinda M. Snodgrass, and we're going to see what the Google Box Bye. tells us about her. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Melinda M. Snodgrass. Melinda, how are you today? I'm good, and let's let's get the freaking French bread out of the way, shall we? <laughs> I brought it in. <laughs> so, yeah. Very it's a low. There you go. <laughs> Th those look fantastic. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Now, is, is that a French baguette? Is that what that's it's called? It's a baguette. Or, or what is yes, that? I, I use the baguette pans. I'm, I always criticize my own cooking. My friends who come to Thanksgiving dinner are like, okay, what don't you like about your cooking tonight? I think the crust could have been a little bit crispier, but overall, I'm pleased. <laughs> so, so now so I'll have French bread. So, so, 
Thanks. Th there it is. I like it. Right out, right out of the way. I like it. Melinda, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank uh, you. Very we much. had a little bit of. Oh, of course. We had a little bit of a pre-show earlier. We, we got to talk a little bit about who you are and what you do and a lot of the things that you've accomplished, things that you've tried in your life that you decided were not the best, uh, I guess, journey for you. So you're like, I'm going to switch gears. Let me try this. Let me try this. I now, love that. Yeah. I mean, she, she's I done that. a lot of, in, of incredible things. Just uh, reading from, from her dot com, she has an incredible bio up there. Uh, that she's from Los Angeles, that she learned to ride, shoot, swim, and fly fish. She studied ballet, voice, and piano. She, piano, she was in, even in uh, Vienna, Austria, where she studied voice at the Conservatorium der Stadt Wien. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm going to find out. M uh, Melinda, did, yeah. I, did, I, did I pronounce did that right? Was that right. fairly accurate? Yeah. Yep. Yay, that's oh, awesome. Right. She also studied at the New Mexico School of Law, Constitutional Law, Jurisprudence, and Legal History. Uh, and, and, but she, and, and, and I'm not even going to tell you why she decided to steer away from these things, but I'm just hoping that our community understands a fraction of brilliance that exists inside uh, of this incredible individual. Um, not, not, not to mention that, but she's also worked with a gentleman named Victor Milan, who we're going to get into, uh, George R. R. Martin, who you guys most certainly recognize his name. Um, and today, she actually she worked on a little bit of a short story. So I'm going to see if, uh, if she may be able to, I, mean, I don't know if it's a behind the scenes thing or something she may be willing to share with us. But Melinda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And how is your day going? How's your Monday been? It's, you know, it's good. I mean, it's a weird time, you know, and we're all sort of <clears throat> living in our homes and communicating on a box. And I, you know, I play in a role playing game, a couple of role playing games online on Zoom and Discord. And, you know, it's some way to have contact with people. But I have to tell you, I was listening to your pre show. I am so excited because I changed out of my Star Wars t shirt <laughs> so I would look like a grown up. <laughs> and Star Wars is the reason I'm not a lawyer anymore and I'm a writer. So I adore Star Wars. Um, Yay. You know, awesome. everybody, awesome. And I worked on Star Trek, The Next Generation. So all of the Trek people are like, how can you prefer Star Wars? And I'm like, but I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> you know, it's better. It's better. <laughs> so anytime it's better. you want to talk about Star Wars, I'm, I'm totally there. So no. oh, don't give him that green light, Melinda. Oh, don't man, do that's it. Outstanding. <laughs> I, and I, I will say this, Melinda. We were, we were, we were looking up. We were just kind of learning a little bit about you, and you have done so many things. Like, what was your? And, and I would say this: like, of all the things that you studied, and of all the passions that you've pursued, which are some some huge things. How, what was the catalyst? And we, you kind of touched on it just a moment. What was the catalyst that really pushed you to say, you know what, I'm going to write. This is what I want to do. This is my happy space. Like, how, <laughs> with all the things that you've done, what was that catalyst? Well, it was the fact that I've, it, my father, I mean, everything was back to my father. I mean, he, he taught me to read before I went to school and he engendered in me this love of science fiction and, and th the fantastic. And I always loved stories and I, I was an only child. So I had a lot of, you know, sort of imaginary friends and stories in my head. And my mother reminded me when I was a little girl, I used to write plays for the neighborhood kids to perform in, you know, I had this thing. So it was sort of there. And my father was a wonderful musician before he became a very staid businessman. Um, and so, I ended up inheriting his ability. He could sing and he played like five instruments and he was amazing. And he, he always encouraged me to try anything and everything um, and, you know, to just go for it. I mean, he was the one who said, oh, you want to go to Europe and study opera when you're 17? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I'll back you on that. Wow. Um, and wow. so as a result, he, he taught me how to be a risk taker. And because uh, he was a big risk taker, he had done all of these amazing things in his life. He'd been a candy maker and he'd had a jazz band. He he had a flight school, and, you know, back in the day and all of this crazy stuff. So I really was his child. And um, and so he sent me out in the world with this idea that I could try and do anything because, you know, what's the worst that happens? You you fail. So, OK, you pick yourself up, you go on to something else. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, music was terribly important to me. I write to music. Um, I love it still. And, uh, but I needed to be in the arts. And the law school thing, I was good at it. But when I was in this law firm, I was miserable. And I thought, uh, I, can't, I can't do this, you know. 
And then I went and saw the Empire, Empire Strikes Back and Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. And I turned to Vic who was sitting with me and I said, he's right, that's it. I've got to go and try this writing. And so I walked into the law firm the next morning, I quit. Um, that morning, I just- the next morning. The next morning, the next I was morning. out. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. Wow. And Yoda I spoke to my you. diplomas and my little plants and I walked out. Um, and then Vic was a mentor to me as I was starting to write novels. Um, and we would meet up. I don't know why we always met up, but we met up at midnight at the Vips Big Boy in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I would show him my chapters and he would tell me what was wrong with them. And then I would, you know, go and rewrite and then I'd bring in new chapters. And, and then I sold a book. Um, and, you know, that's the thing about, I love this profession because everybody pays it forward. And I got into writing novels because of Vic. And I got into Hollywood because of George, um, because he generously said, if you write a spec script, I'll show it to my agent. So I wrote a spec Star Trek script and he showed it to his agent and she sent it to Trek and then they bought it and then they hired me. And that launched my Hollywood career. So, um, which again is anytime anybody offers you an opportunity, take it, you know, walk through the door. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, and I think, wow. a lot, I think a lot of times people think, oh, I don't need to take this one because there's another one around the corner. You don't know that. You don't, you don't know that. You know if there's another one around the corner. There may not be another one around the corner, and you don't want that regret of I should have taken that opportunity when I had it. I assumed there was another one right around the corner, and one hasn't popped up in a decade. And if I had just taken that one, I, I would be in a completely different place. Like Those okay. opportunities don't pop up every day. So take what Melinda said. Somebody offers you an opportunity, something that really truly moves you. Say yes, even if you're afraid to do it. You know, if you're afraid, that's when you know it's real. I mean, it's really like that you know, Aaron so Burr, different you think of Hamilton, you know, it's like it, he was always waiting to take his shot, you know, and, uh, and Hamilton was like, I'm not gonna miss my shot. And I, I think that's just an amazing sort of advice for people. Um, in terms of their lives, you know. I agree. I agree. Jen Hogan put a put a question in the chat. I wanted to put this up for you, Melinda. Sure. Maybe you can maybe you can give her a little. And she says, "Was it difficult to be a woman science fiction writer back in the day?" I don't know what back in the day means. <laughs> I guess when you because uh, I think I think Empire came out in uh, what was it seventy nine? I think the number four came out in seventy seven. Uh, number number five came out in seventy nine, and number six came out in either eighty two or eighty three. So I'd say in the early 80s, late 70s, how difficult was it to be a woman science fiction writer? There weren't a lot of us, um, but it, um, I didn't particularly have a problem. I know other people did and that there were issues, but that has changed so profoundly. The science fiction writers of America, I think the majority membership now, slightly over 51, 52% are, are women. Wow. And, and so that has definitely changed. I mean, and... and when I started writing, I didn't have to use initials like, you know, Andre Norton with a sort of gender neutral name or, you know, use initials to hide who I was. Um, I just, you know, went for it. And part of that, again, was, you know, my dad was like, you can do anything you want. So, um, you know, don't hide, don't hide what you are and who you are. And, you know, would I have been more successful? Who knows? I mean, you know, that's hard to say um, because I've been I've been lucky. I've gotten to write the books I wanted to write and, you know, work for television shows that uh, that I loved. And, you know, it's, it's been good. But my only ambition now is I want to write a yeah, story. And doing a little, just a little bit of research. Uh, can you, would you, oh, yeah. I mean, and again, with everything that you've achieved, I don't think anything's going to slow you down uh, when it comes to when it comes to whatever your next adventure is going to be. You kind of you kind of found the flame to kind of fuel this rocket ship of creativity uh, that you're just kind of like piloting uh, through the unknown and creating your 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 destiny, creating your reality, which is which is super cool. I was reading through and I uh, well, I saw that you had created a, or co-created a series called the Wild Card series. Which is, is a twenty-two book series. Would you would you talk a little bit about that and kind of uh, walk us through the maybe the cliff? Yeah. Notes or um, like that? Uh, so I uh, was books. in this role playing game um, with a whole bunch of really famous writers like Daniel Abraham and Walter John Williams and George R. R. Martin and and Roger Zelazny. I mean, we had this amazing gaming group and. Um, 
And George was running a superhero game for us and we were playing it obsessively. And George finally would stay over the night because he'd drive down to, and stay at my house after the games and we would play till like two and three in the morning. And he said, there's gotta be a way to make money off this obsession. And so he said, what if we create a shared world anthology? So we spent three hours on a Sunday morning and we laid out, we sort of created the universe, the sandbox. And because it's a shared world, the fun of those is that you invite other writers to come and play in your universe. And everybody creates a character and then we get to use each other's characters. And we've been doing it for way more years than I want to talk about. Um, it's a long time. And in terms of books in the pipeline, we have 28 of them. And, um, and George and I have been, you know, editing it and writing for it. I mean, he doesn't listen to all the George people. He's not working on Wild Cards now. He's working on the Wins of Winter. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, so we, we just had a great time. And then the last big Hollywood thing I did, we had set it up. As a television series, unfortunately, we didn't get picked up, but uh, the writer's room was amazing and we did some amazing work. And And I know someday Wild Cards is gonna come to the screen. I'm pretty confident. It's sort of a real world look at superheroes and in a very, a very, as I said, real way, really grounded in that, you know, what are the legal ramifications and how do people react when they get superpowers? I mean, sure. most people don't put on long johns sure. and say, I think I'll go fight crime. <laughs> you know, most of them go, you know, I'm an accountant. I think I'll just continue to be an accountant, even though I can, you know, do this work. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so we try to take a look at that. And um, <clears throat> I'm very proud of the books. We have wonderful writers who are involved with the series. And yes, thank you, Evan. Stop pestering George and let him finish. <laughs> you know, we and, uh, and I, you know, I do a lot of the work on wild cards and, you know, so that, uh, so that he can focus on this little thing called game of Thrones, you know, or wins a winner. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, um, I don't really think that's going to go anywhere to be honest with you, Melinda. I know. I would have hoped. Would you say game you know? of something? I don't know. Yeah. I really don't think it's going to grow legs. Oh, okay. I just don't. I'm pretty good at stuff like this. I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen. <laughs> that's a, uh, <laughs> that's but a do check out wild cards, guys, because it's fun, you know? Yeah, for, absolutely, for sure. I know, I know. the The Commodore and I sit down, and every time we have a we have a new guest coming on, we always kind of go through a series of different types of questions. And we've realized that I kind of I kind of engage this specific subject of the interview. And the Commodore normally has a little m more worldly questions, things that are a little more uh, macro, where I'm kind of more micro. Uh, okay. He, he delves into the philosophy of the why. Uh, some, some really <laughs> incredible stuff. I don't know if you have a question sitting in the hopper right now that you uh, that you would like to ask Melinda. I know we talked about a bunch of them before, but I don't want to put you too far on the spot. No, no, yeah, not, not yet. We're I'm getting still, there. I'm huh? still, I'm still He's forming. formulating. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, we chatted a little bit before, Melinda. You said not only do you have a, a .dot com, but you also have Facebook and you have Twitter um, that you that you push as well. So I thought I was like, you know what? Let's let's Google. Uh, Melinda M. Snodgrass and see see what we find. Oh. Uh, so I thought this would be interesting. I we have we ha we haven't done we haven't done this yet, but the Googlebot is brilliant. So more than likely, it knows that you are a part of our show right now. So it's probably going to do some predictive text and assume that I'm about to type your name out because that's how terrifying uh, AI has become. AI has become. Uh, so we're going to we're we're going to bring this up real quick. We're going to go to the Google box. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What we, 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 what's going on here? The what is that? What really? Are you kidding me? I didn't even get to type anything in. <laughs> Google, you but got you me. Just did it. Wait a minute, Melinda has a Wikipedia page. What? A Wikipedia page. Melinda, I have you're the real deal. I'm just gonna throw I it out there. I have no idea what it says. You're the I real deal. You got a Wikipedia page. That's outstanding. So uh, she wrote several episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation while serving as the series story editor during its second and third season. She has also contributed produced scripts for the series Odyssey 5, The Outer Limits, Sequest Sequ DSV. There I it is. knew it. There, it, there is. it is. And Reasonable Doubt, she was also a consulting producer on The Profile. 
you're you're a busy young woman, Melinda. This is outstanding. And by the way, uh, me and Sequest DSV, my heart. I love <laughs> Sequest DSV. Uh, to, t- to to put myself in a timeline, I recorded every episode on a VHS cassette tape uh, okay. when it would come out. It was absolutely incredible. Roy Schneider was awesome. Uh, it was an incredible show. I can't. That was so cool to to read that. Um, a Sequest DSV. She also has written science fiction novels and short stories, notably the Circuit Trilogy, and is the co-editor and a frequent story contributor to George R. R. Martin's long-running since 1987 Wild Cards Shared World series. I mean, that that's we've only made it four sentences into your Wikipedia page, and it is also uh, all already incredible, Melinda. That is absolutely incredible. This is uh, how how was it writing for different different types of shows and and series? I mean, you wrote for Star Trek: Next Generation. That's huge. Sequest DSV. Like, this is the real deal. That has to be awesome. How is it getting that phone call or that that message that you were going to be a writer for 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 an episode of these incredible shows? Like, was it motivational? Was it scary? Was it a little bit of both? Was it like now it's time? Was it like I've hit the big show? Like, how did you feel about that? Um, I was scared uh, when when Trek bought, you know, I thought I'd sold the script and then, you know, that would be it. And um, and then they hired me. They had me come in for a notes meeting. And at the end of the three hour notes meeting, Morris Hurley said, I'm going to hire you and you start on Monday. And this was a Thursday. So I flew home to New Mexico. And I, <laughs> and I packed up my stuff and I drove to L.A. And, you know, learned how to write for a television series. I was, you know, on the show for half of the second season and all of the third season. And then after that, I went on to work on Reasonable Doubts, which was a lawyer and cop show. Um, and it was interesting. I was the only, I had, you know, been an attorney. And so I was the only lawyer actually on the show on that one. And Profiler, I mean, it's a weird thing. I'm really known for the sci- as science fiction writer, and I love it, and that's what my books are all focused on. I mean, the book that just came out is about a vampire law firm and a young woman lawyer who works in the vampire law firm in New York, but I've done an awful lot of non-science fiction. I mean, you know, two of my major shows were, were cop and lawyer shows. Profiler was a serial, hunt, hunting down serial killer shows. So, um, but... You know, I love writing. I love writing scripts, and I loved writing for television. Um, and you know, I hope to do it again. I have a TV pilot that's based on one of my novels, actually, um, that we were supposed to shoot in June here in New Mexico, but we have this pandemic thing going on. So, um, you know, hopefully, I'll get a chance to shoot it once things settle down or we find a way. I mean, I do know the big Netflix studio south of Albuquerque has started shooting again. So I'm kind of hoping that, you know, maybe we can, we can get this, you know, we've done all the, I've got the Bible written, I've written the pilot, we, you know, have a lookbook, and we've done all the stuff you need to do. And, you know, we'll see, I'd love to get it, you know, up and this is the golden age of television. I mean, this is, you know, with all of the platforms, anything you want, um, you're going to find the thing that really speaks to you, you know, whether it's, you know, altered carbon, or, you know, fabulous Mrs. Maisel or, you know, whatever it is, your, your taste, you're going to find it. Yeah. There's uh, something out there for everybody. And there's so many different platforms. Uh, there's so many different platforms for people to connect to from, from Netflix to Hulu, to Amazon prime, to HBO go to like a showtime. YouTube has yeah. its own series. I mean, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, the, 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 the plethora of choices uh, that people have in regards to the television shows that, that they watch, the series that they watch. Um, binge watching has become a bigger and bigger and bigger thing as traditional cable and commercials goes away. Uh, people are finding themselves discovering shows that are not on TV anymore, but you can go like, I liked Monk. Monk was one of my favorite shows with Tony Shalhoub. Uh, uh, House MD, another incredible series. Wings was incredible. And all of these are available on social, uh, on platforms, on streaming platforms. Although they're not available on real TV now, you can still, and this is what an amazing time to be able to do something like that. Before this existed, how was I going to watch Monk? I would have to buy the DVDs. Amazon really wasn't Amazon. I would have to go to Walmart or something and buy the DVDs. <laughs> Bring them home, yeah. buy a DVD player because I don't even own one of those anymore. Or, or you'd have to wait until seven thirty on Wednesday night and turn on USA. Yeah, and watch one episode. Watch with one the, episode with commercials. Yeah, forty minutes long with twenty minutes of commercials, which I don't. I, I like commercials as much as I like interest, and I don't like interest at all. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> so it, like, I, I love. Uh, it's fabulous. I mean, it is. It is interesting because binging has meant that as writers, we have to develop different skills, though. Um, because the old style where people would have a week 
you know, you could end it and then you could do that recap. You can't write that way anymore. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's definitely changed how, how you approach the series that you're creating because you know people are going to sit down. They're going to, you know, mainline two or three episodes or more a night. That's interesting. It makes for a very different storytelling experience. And so you have to adapt to that as writers because we're not writing for that same, sure. oh, I can't wait to see what happens next week. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's got a very different feel. And if you're interested in AI, here's a show you should binge. One of my favorite shows of all time, Person of Interest. Used to be on CBS. Of interest. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. We'll check that out. Yeah, check it out. And uh, don't be cool. It looks like something like this, it carries some weight. <laughs> when you're getting a recommendation from Melinda M. Snodgrass, ladies and gentlemen, watch Person of Interest. I'm watch the show. Out there. She's not going to lead cool. you wrong. For the first uh, episode. A question. Okay, sorry. I was just going to oh, say, no, no, no. You, you, episodes, you you're going to think it's a cop. You're going to think it's a procedural. It's not. It's a science fiction show, and it's all about AI. Oh, and it's really? and Jonah Nolan, uh, Jonathan Nolan is also he's also the main producer of Westworld. He did Person of Interest. Now, so I loved Westworld. I've Westworld seen every episode of Westworld. <laughs> yeah, incredible, incredible yeah. series. Absolutely yeah. incredible. And, it, and it, it blew my mind. Uh, it, it continued to, that 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 show continued to blow my mind every every episode. There was a little more going on yeah. the series, the series endings and then the introduction to the second um, the, the second season itself. I needed to watch it twice to get everything that happened. And I'm pretty sure I still miss some stuff like it was in the entire second season as much. As hard as it is, because when you introduce a first season, it's like introducing a, a first movie. You introduce people to the concept. But then that next one, you got to step it up a notch. You can't step it up too much and take them too far away from a reality they've already built. You have to make it like just a little bit of, of, of plausible evolution. But you need to switch the game up. And in Westworld, they I didn't noticed. care about any of those rules, and they just blew your freaking mind. <laughs> it was crazy. I notice a lot of series, they'll start off with the pilot episode, and, you, and they, they build it up to be this thing that you think it's going to be and then by like halfway through the season you're like oh my god i did not know yeah, any of this was going to happen they flip the script on you and All i right. think that's a big part of what she was talking about about it's completely different writing in this mm -hmm. world of binge watching now it's not the same anymore uh, yeah. you know your, your writing style changes the way you tell your story has to change the way that people are digesting the information because like you said it was i watched my show at 7 30 on a wednesday and then i don't get to see it again for another week so you have a recap, you have a little bit of a therapeutic session where you can kind of like think about it and you understand it and you want to figure everything out. Then you have a week to prepare yourself to watch another episode. But when you binge watch, you have about 10 seconds before that next episode starts and it, and it goes right into it. So I would imagine that has to shift up the style and the way that, that episodes are written. I didn't even think about that. That is that is very interesting. So, Melinda, I have I have a question for you. If someone at home right now that's watching this that probably tuned in just to see you and and hear everything that you had to say, if they're sitting at home, you're like, I love writing stories, but I have no idea how to get into screenwriting or how how I would go about writing a novel or or getting it published or anything like that. What are what are some of the the very first steps that someone can take if they've got a story to tell? Okay, <laughs> the first thing to do and other writers will disagree with me. And, but I think the first thing you need to do is figure out how does that story end? What is the ending of your book or your screenplay? Because the, the, I, I've always been an outliner, I think it's from having been a lawyer. And then in Hollywood, we meticulously outline, we lay out, we break a story and put it up on a board, you know, on a, on a cork board or on a whiteboard. But if you don't know the ending, you're going to generally end up in a swamp. In my experience is that, or it's gonna take you a lot longer to write that book. So what I always say to people is how does this end? And then the next question you wanna ask yourself is what do I wanna say? I mean, there's there's plot and then there's theme. And plot is the stuff that happens in a, sh in a book or a TV show and theme is why it matters. And if you know what your theme is, then you can, you can tell your story, then you, you have a foundation and then the plot will just grow out of that. But once you know what the end is, then I say, sit down and think about it and figure out what are your big scenes? What are the big moments? And I am happy to talk to anybody about it. People can contact me on Facebook or Twitter. And um, I teach a lot too. I do a lot of teaching on screenwriting and just writing in general. 
And then you have to do the work. I mean, you have to treat this as a job. And if you're waiting for the muse to come and whisper in your ear, you may never get that book or that screenplay written. So what you, and that's why I recommend outlining because I get up in the morning and I know exactly what the scenes are I need to write that day. And so I can come in, get my coffee, sit down and I do those scenes. And, um, but you have to treat it, you have to be very disciplined about it and, and set a goal. I mean, my goal, if, if I'm writing a screenplay, it's seven pages. If I'm writing a script, it's, it's a thousand words, which is four pages. I, a, a novel. I try to I try to write a thousand words a day, um, and before you know it, you have a book. I mean, it's it just you just keep going, um, and you know there are very different skills um, between screenwriting and books, noveling, novel writing. But um, you know, I I love to talk about it. So if anybody wants to you know reach out and say hey, um, I'm happy to answer questions. Some really good stuff. Start with your ending. Start, start with your, your – and, and again, like, she, like Melinda said, you don't have to do it this way. Just do it as she does it, and clearly she's found a lot of success in it. Uh, but there's, of course, other creatives out there that are going to tell you how, how they do it. And I think this is a good exercise to figure out how you guys do it. What is your, your – your, how do you discover it? And clearly Melinda's been writing for a really long time, so it's probably taken her a little bit. And like she said, I think she thinks part of it came from her lawyer background, the structure and the idea and like the framework. Start with this. A theme is really important. Meaning is really important. And you kind of build your build your story backwards, give it content, give it emotional value, and then kind of flush it out. Have a specific thing. And another thing she said that really kind of rung true with me, she wakes up, she grabs her coffee. What's up? She goes in and she knows what she has to do. She doesn't just say, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Where do I even start? Nope. She knows exactly where the starting line is. She knows exactly what she has to do. She can sit down and get to it. I, I really, really, really liked what you said about theme. Three reallys. Not, the, not necessarily plot, but theme. And it kind of reminds me of uh, like kind of having a mission statement in, in whatever your, your craft is. Sure. And having like a, a direction to go in. Um, and, and a couple other things you said. You said coffee, and, and then I immediately thought of another question. Do you have like a specific routine that you follow in the morning? Because a lot of people that work at home and they work by themselves or in their office, they, they have to have some sort of structure or routine that they get into every day that helps them stay focused. Do you have anything like that? Um, you know, yeah, I suppose I'm very boring. I make a good breakfast. I love breakfast. I think it's just a fabulous meal. Um, I, you know, I make a good breakfast. I get my coffee. I come in, I read the news, you know, I want to know what's going on. I'm kind of a news junkie. Um, and then I go to work and I try to, I mean, when my horses, my horses are still in California, Ugh. I'm trying to get them home, <laughs> you know, it's been, but when I have them, it's like, I have to be very disciplined because I have to ride, I have to go and ride these animals and that's three to four hours out of my day. So I get my right, I prefer to write in the morning and then I go and ride the horse, work my horses and do that physical. I think a lot of writers don't do enough physical activity and I think it's really important. I think if you're stuck on a scene or you're stuck with the character interactions, if I just go take a hike or go ride the horses or, well, when I could go to a gym, I can't go to a gym right now. Um, then, you know, it often the, the answer will come, you know, is I do something physical. So, you know, I tend to do a lot of physical activity and then, you know, and, and honestly, people, your brain can only sort of focus on your writing for about five to five and a half hours, any more than that. And you're kind of just spinning your wheels. I mean, um, it, it's it's draining. It's very draining, you know, work. Um, of course, absolutely. When you're creating something from nothing and you're trying to make sure all the ends match and you're trying to keep all the different kind of concepts and the plots and keep everything together. You know, I, I imagine it'd be easy just to go off like after five hours, just be able to go off into a tangent and then find yourself out in no man's land. I'm like, but this doesn't apply to the story. Yeah, then you got to go back in time. You got to be like, well, I kind of diverged right here. I can't use any of this stuff. Or maybe I can use pieces away. here and there, but. Oh and look! I would imagine so. Uh, th there was a question that Evan Lord put up. He said, "What have you been? What have you been doing during the pandemic? What What have you been doing uh, uh, to keep?" And I will say this. Let's go back real quick. Not only are you not boring, but you said you make a really good breakfast in the morning. That Most already piqued my day. interest immediately. That immediately makes you not boring, Melinda. That's absolutely <laughs> outstanding. What was your uh, What was your What was your breakfast this morning? What was your hearty, amazing, delicious breakfast? You I I'm so I, I do pretty much protein. You know, eggs, bacon. Um, 
And sometimes I make a, a scrambled egg with lots of New Mexico green chili in it and some salsa on top, you know, because chili is for everything. Um, I, I'm a New Mexican. I grew up here. Linda, so hot food Linda, is. You think, you think you're boring? I have the same exact sandwich every single day. Every day. Every day. Whole grain bread, mayonnaise, <laughs> sharp cheddar cheese, alfalfa sprouts, arugula, turkey or ham. And that's it. Which were out of sprouts, by the way. Every, I know. They were, they were getting a little. <laughs> they had to go. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of living on half a ham sandwich at, you know, at around 1.30 in the afternoon after my nice breakfast. Um, but what have I been doing during the pandemic? I've been writing. Um, I've been hiking a lot. Um, and uh, while I wait for my horses to come home, I mean, this has been, you know, I nobody expected this i mean when i left la the end of march i thought oh you know we'll get this under control and i'll be back you know um and i had kind of moved my life out there while we were developing wild cards and so my horses came with me and um and you know my cats and everything and so then i've been sort of trying to get back settled in new mexico and and like yikes you know <laughs> um and i've been working a lot i mean i'm getting uh working with my my uh, indie publisher, uh, Prince of Cats, Alexi Vandenberg, and uh, we've been getting my backlist available so people can read the books I've written. And I'm working on a new novel, and I'm working on this short story. And you know, so you know, you, this hasn't been that hard on me. I think writers have sort of we've sort of breezed through this thing because we're used to being alone. Um, also, because we have this sort of cosmic sharing section in our heads all the time. I mean, I'm never really alone. It's like, you know, all these characters are going, hey, well, what about this thing? And what if I did this other thing? And, and so I'm going, wait, 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 <laughs> wait. <laughs> I can only do one thing at a time. Because <laughs> I've got this fantasy. I've got this idea for a fantasy novel. And I've got these characters going, hi, hi, you know, I'm here. Well, right about me. Hello. Yeah. You forgot about me. Forgot about you me. Have an you have an while. adventure or two left. Please write about me. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think in some ways it's. So, I want to go back to. Uh, go ahead. I want to go back to uh, all the different different things that you tried. And uh, I've heard I've heard a lot of people ask, like, how do you find your passion? And the answer that I always hear from many, many different people is just try stuff. And was this was this your was this your uh, your goal is to just try as many things as you can? Were you searching for your passion, uh, and or was it just your your father encouraging you to be a risk taker that made you try all these different things? Uh, it, that was part of it, but some of it was I just everything looked interesting to me. I mean, there were so many things um, like that I food. desperately wanted to try. I mean, you know, and and I grew up. When I was a little kid, the one thing I remember, and this kind of goes back to the question about did I find it hard to be a woman science fiction writer, every time people would say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would go, an astronaut. And they would go, girls can't be astronauts. Or I want to be president of the United States. Girls can't be president of the United States. And so that frustrated me tremendously because I was interested in all of those things. Um, and so I wanted to try as many things as I possibly could. And, you know, music was, you know, I'd hoped I'd be a great opera star, but I'm not exactly, you know, built for it. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty small. And I had a good voice, but I didn't have a brilliant voice. I didn't have that, you know, voice that would perform at La Scala. And I didn't want to do it on an average way. I, you know, I wanted to find something that I felt like gripped me and fed my spirit and that I was also good at. Um, and so when I realized I wasn't going to make it um, as a singer, then I went on and, you know, came back to the United States and finished my undergraduate degree with my music and history and then went on to law school. That was for my dad. He really wanted me to be a lawyer. Um, and realized that I was good at it, but I didn't love it. I didn't like it. And um, I just, life is too short to do something that doesn't make you happy. And I understand that I agree. Love people, that. you know, you end up with family and children and you have responsibilities and you may end up in that job that you have to do. But I really feel like life is so brief. I mean, you know, a candle and then we're gone and then we've rejoined, you know, we've become star stuff again. And um, 
So while you're here, you need to experience everything you possibly can. So I try to travel. I try to, you know, do as, you know, be the best horsewoman, best dressage rider I can be, you know, read books, listen to great music, you know, um, it's so uh, those great meals. <laughs> your, uh, what was your, what was your, your shortest run or, or like the, the, the one thing that you tried that you really didn't like at all? What was, was, was there something like that, that, that you experienced? You tried it out and you were like, you know what? Day two, I'm good. I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. <laughs> Probably law. I, honestly, I, I think I knew within the first few months of law school that, that I, this was not for me. I, and I was good at it. I mean, you know, I did very well in law school, graduated in the top 10 and, you know, did all this stuff. And, but I knew this was not, not for me, but you know, I had, I didn't want to disappoint my father. So I finished, you know, and then I took the bar cause you're kind of, and then I passed the damn thing. And then I was like, well, I guess I better, you know, I guess I better do something with this. And so I, you know, spent a little time practicing law and went, mm, no, no. I mean, everything else I've loved. I mean, I wouldn't have minded of being a professional horse trainer. You know, I really love that. Um, and my music, you know, my music was, meant so much to me, but, um, there were, there were a couple of things that we read, and I kind of wanted to bring this up because I feel like a lot of people uh, – two things, actually. You just you, one, one of the things you just said was that uh, you, you, you did this, and you were very good at it. And I've talked to a lot of people that specifically have found themselves in a career, and the reason that they do it is because they're very good at it. Not because they love it, not because it moves them, but because they're very good at it. And a lot of times the conversation leads to the fact that it doesn't really matter what you do if your ethic is incredible and your sense of adventure is amazing. Whatever you do, you're going to be good at. So do something that you love. Do something that makes you happy. Do something that motivates you. Don't keep yourself in a specific genre of work because you're good at it. Or do you like what you do? Not really, but I'm good at it. Well, if you're good at this thing, who knows? Maybe you could be good at something else that really, truly moves you. And another thing that I read in your about were two really, really important things that I think I needed to read, and I'm glad you put them in here. One said, uh, you had a good voice, but you didn't have an extraordinary voice. And the other one said, you really loved law, but you didn't like lawyers. And those types of things are sometimes a realization that some people will push away from their level of reality. They want to be that extraordinary singer, even though they realize they're a good singer or a great singer, great ain't going to do it. You need to be extraordinary. So that had to be a sense of realization that I think a lot of people may either grab a hold of or push away, but you recognized it. You uh, adjusted immediately. You took it into consideration, realized that this is your limitation, and you left that behind, which a lot of people have a hard time doing, and you pursued something different. You did the same thing with law. You went, you got your law degree, you passed the damn bar exam because you're clearly a brilliant woman. You got into law, then you realized, even though I've put all this work into it, it's still not for me. And a lot of people will stick through it because they've already invested so much time. It's like staying in a bad relationship because you've been in the relationship for such a long time that you don't want to leave it. But you made a fantastic decision, and I think it's an inspirational and a motivational decision for people to make, although you may be good at something and you've already invested time in it. If it doesn't move you, if it doesn't truly beat your heart, maybe that's not the thing that you need to be doing and find a that thing. A lot of times, a lot of times your passion ends up being a combination of things that you're really, really good at. Sure. Like I really, really love numbers. I really, really love music. And I've, I've, you know, I've found a way to combine all these different things that I love to do that I'm really, really good at. And that usually uh, sometimes can end up being what your passion is. It, and it may be a completely different niche that nobody's even ever thought of. Yeah. So, so true. Um, you don't necessarily have to just stick with what you're yeah. good at and, and like consider that where you need to go. Yeah, and like Melinda said, just try everything. Try all the different things. And you can try them for a multitude of reasons. You know, you can try it because it sounds interesting, because it sounds adventurous, because somebody you love really wanted you to do that thing. Like you were speaking about law and the love that you have for your father and how inspirational and how much of an educator and a teacher and a guide he was for you. You know, and it's like you tried it. Cool. You 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 didn't just try and read one law book. You got your degree in law, <laughs> and then you passed the bar. Then you well, joined me, as an attorney. So you truly tried it out. Let me let me do my after school special or my my public service announcement here, which is, this does not mean stay in school. You know, go to school, get 
study these things because I have used my law degree so much in my work. I mean, the script that got me my job on Star Trek and that I'm most famous for is called The Measure of a Man. It's about a courtroom, it's a courtroom drama. I couldn't have written that if I had not studied law and read the Dred Scott decision in constitutional law. My novel that just came out, quite um, uh, This Case Is Gonna Kill Me, about the young woman in the vampire law firm, it's based very loosely on one of the cases on a, you know, it was sort of the genesis was a big estate argue, fight over a will that I had experienced in a law firm. I couldn't have written that book if I didn't have the law degree. I wouldn't have gotten hired for Reasonable Doubts, which was a lawyer show, if I didn't have the law degree. So nothing you study is wasted. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm always saying to people, try a lot of different things so you have those experiences, but also education, it's never going to go to waste. I mean, my history degree in undergraduate school, I pull on that for for my writing constantly. And so I, you know, th there's my afternoon special, my, my public service announcement, stay in school, kids, <laughs> you, know, you know, go get your, go finish your education because it's really important. You know? Yeah. It's a, uh, and, and one, one of these links on your, on the, on the Google box was an IMD pa IMDB page that you, that you also have. Um, and so th these are some of the, some of the things, but uh, we're, we're talking to a true professional here. This is fantastic. Um, so just your film filmography, just going through and kind of looking at what you've done, Odyssey 5, The Outer Limits, Pro Flyers, Sliders, In the Fold, Strange Luck, Trapped in Space, Sequest, What's Up, Reasonable Doubts, Beyond L.A. Law, and then look at all of these episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation that she was involved in. And wow. there's Me Measure of a Man, 1989. Uh, so in, in, incredible. And like she said, she's taken all of these things that she's learned from all of her experiences. Whether she's practicing law right now or not, she still uses the education the history, the idea, the experience that she learned through all of these aspects of life, which has led her to write, which is what she wants to do on a series regarding the information that she learned when she was in law school. And Dana, Dana brought up a kind of kind of humorous point. Uh, if everyone knows that you're a lawyer, nobody's going to steal your content. Yeah, if you're sure not steal her material, she has the law in her back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, 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 I question for you because there's so many different facets of law. What what got you interested in constitutional law? Oh, that's that. If if I were still a lawyer, I would be working for the ACLU right now. That would be, you know, um, because the Constitution, although we've now discovered how fragile it is if people don't actually respect it. But it is an extraordinary document um, because it can flex and change and move. And it is, you know, foundational about basic human rights um, and, and how we treat each other. I find, I just found constitutional law to be just the most amazing form of study and an inspiration to me. And, and you never know where that constitutional case will come from. We have we gay marriage, thank God we have gay marriage a lot you know legal across fifty states in this country, and it grew out of a tax case. It grew out of a case of somebody going up against the IRS and saying, "I was with my partner for all these decades, and I'm being taxed as this is not fair," and it wasn't fair, and it went to the Supreme Court, and the court ruled, and now these people you know people can have the same rights. That everybody else in this country has and so i'm passionate about it i i feel like you know it's an extraordinary document but it has to be defended and it has to be defended by all of us absolutely uh, you know not not just the the aclu lawyers and the brennan's you know center for justice going in and, and fighting for these things you know voting rights uh civil rights women's rights everything is coming out of the constitution um, and I, I just, I found it amazing. So that was, you know, if I could have hung out a shingle and said, bring me your big constitutional cases, then I might still be a lawyer, but, uh, that kind of didn't work out. So instead I get to pontificate about it, you know, and write, yeah, you get write, to write about it and create about it. And you get to yeah. like, it, you get to weave in these incredible things that you have such a passion for, but you get to take all of these things that you love and weave them into a story and create something. Well, the side so awesome to be able to use that. Yeah. The big science fiction series that I have the space opera called Imperials. It's yes, there are space battles and spaceships, but it really is 
what I was fascinated with was the study of otherness and the study of second class citizens and how does societies change and what forces them to change. And so, you know, I played with that issue um, because I was, I was also very interested. I, I thought, you know, what if we're the evil invading aliens? You know, what if we go out into the stars and we meet other alien races and our first reaction is, you know, to kick the heck out of them, you know, because we are scared of them and we, you know, and we're sort of truculent people. And, uh, and I thought, what if we go out and just conquer everyone and suddenly we're the jerks, you know, instead of, and then what does that society look like? And what does fear, how does fear affect governing principles? And, you know, we're kind of experiencing it right now, <laughs> you know? So we, um, we absolutely are. It's really, really interesting to kind of take a step back and, and, and watch at w at what the country is going through, which is a growing phase. It's, it, it's a growth spurt. Um, and and you, you really bring up a really great idea, especially the fact that your affinity for constitutional law goes very goes back to the very heartbeat of our nation, it goes back to the very fabric of what makes this nation what it is. And not only the, our interpretation of this, but our knowledge of it. And how do you defend something that you don't understand? It's all written. It's all right there. But again, uh, the duration of time that's, that's passed, the things that have changed, how we've evolved. And for something like uh, gay rights to come from a tax, uh, uh, an issue that, that, that came up from taxes, and it, it changed this surge throughout our nation that over the last five to 10 to 15 years, I'm extremely proud to say that we have, we have grown leaps and bounds. And yes, there's still some evolution. Absolutely there is. But the movement is, is, is now going and it's going and it's getting, gaining more and more and more steam when it comes to fairness, equal rights, treating people as, as we, we're all equals. We pretty much just want to, to love and to be loved and to be happy and to be safe. And if there's a way that we can all uh, appreciate that and allow others to, to do that, I think we're discovering that more and more now. And it's so cool to be able to see that you have that you've created this 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 beautiful world for yourself to be able to weave in all of these amazing ideas and experiences and knowledge that you have into different facets of life, which then turn around and are watched by millions of people that also gain that same uh, a, a glimmer and sliver of, of inspiration that you were able to kind of like inject in there because of your, your previous passions and things that you've spent time doing. What is the, what, what is the, what is the, the story, the creation that you're the most proud of? Like when, when you think about your, the thing that you're most proud of that really just emanates in your soul and you say, man, I really feel so proud that I was able to do that. What, what is that? It would probably be the measure of a man um, for Star Trek. It would probably be that script. Um, you know, I, I feel like it was just, it was a perfect confluence of, you know, terrific actors, a wonderful director. Um, and, uh, you know, I got to write something that is, says something important, coming back to that issue of theme, you know, um, what is it, what does it mean to be human? Um, what rights does a human being have? And that was, so I think probably measure, I mean, I'm proud of all my books. Some of them are, you know, lighter and more fun, like, like these law books, these urban fantasies, but, but measure, measure felt like it said something. And so I think that, um, you know, my, my friend Lynn Ween, um, who was a very famous comic book writer, he said to me one day, you know, no matter what else you do, you wrote the measure of a man. And he said, remember that, you know, that, that, you know, at the end of your life. And, and Lynn had created Swamp Thing and Wolverine and, you know, Storm and Nightcrawler. And, you know, he knew from which he spoke. And he, because yeah. we all have down moments. I mean, you know, I've had my time when I've gone, oh, I don't know if I'll ever really do anything significant again. And Lynn was like, you did something significant once, you know, and, right. and you get to do these other things and people should, you know, embrace what you've done, be proud of it, you know, love it and, and, um, and never compare yourself to other people because <laughs> that's that, and that path leads to, you know, bitterness and madness. So, you know, compete with yourself all you want, but leave it there. Yeah. And I really like what you just said, embrace what you've done, be proud of it, like period, you know, and like comparing yourself to somebody else, you're never going to be number one. There's always going to be somebody out there. Yeah. That's number one, but 
but and and we talk about this a lot like if you if you shoot for the stars and you miss you still wind up like in the yeah. sky amongst the stars you know like exactly you know, like shoot, shoot, exactly shoot what my dad used to say you know aim for the stars the worst that can happen is you'll land on on the moon you know you'll you'll have something yeah and it that's fabulous. yeah that's it's still it's still an incredible uh adventure an incredible feat um, and the Commodore and I were talking about this last week, um, and I and I thought it an important question. If you, if for some reason we woke up tomorrow and the ability to write for all human beings had vanished, and you had to choose another profession, what would that be? I think I know what you're going to say, but what would what would that profession be? If you woke up tomorrow and Melinda M. Snodgrass could not be a, a writer anymore, she had to do something completely different. What would that be? I have to singer. I would be a singer. Yeah. I would go back to that. Yeah. Man, so awesome. Yeah, that would be. What's, uh, uh, what's your What's your favorite genre of music, or what kind of What kind of music would you sing? So classical. <laughs> I mean, I studied opera for goodness sakes. Um, you know, I, I when I listen to Un Beldi from Madame Butterfly, I cry, and when Traviata, as when Violetta says farewell to um, to her lover in 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 the middle of act two, um, I weep. I mean, it's just that, that music. Um, there's a Mendelssohn piece that I was listening to this morning that I simply adore. I'm afraid I'm a classicist. I love classical music and, you know, I'm becoming a little bit more <laughs> familiar with modern music, but, uh, I, you know, I always seem to go back to, to classical music. And when I take my hikes, I, I have my ear pods in and I, you know, listen to Schubert or, our Mozart, Mozart. Oh my God, <laughs> that's that's the my my hero. That's the music I love. So and it moves you. It moves me. I mean, it really does. Great, whenever, great music. Whenever is, I hear people talking about opera and 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 music like that, they always they always tell the story that that's happening as well. It's not just the music. They always refer to the story and how the story moves them along with the music. So I thought that was very interesting. I'm I'm a music guy at heart. I don't I don't ever really listen to the lyrics of stuff, but uh, <laughs> I've heard that comment uh, again and again and again. Well, opera was you know opera was the television of its era, and it was like also the gaming. You know, I mean, it was sort of the, it was bigger than life. You know, it was suicides and tragic lovers, and you know, it was. I mean, it was Shakespeare, you know, who was entertaining the masses with sword fights and, you know, fart jokes and, you know, and uh, and opera. It, it isn't really that highbrow. It's it's overly dramatic and simply wonderful. And it should be a feast for the eyes and the ears and your emotions, too. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I always I'm like. I can get people into opera if I can take them to the right opera. <laughs> you know, if you, if you can get them into it by by hearing the right thing and and being able to read the words, you know, to understand what's happening because it is a story. You know, it's a play. So um, I think a part of something like that is for us to allow ourselves to become immersed in the experience and in the environment. Is to allow ourselves to be moved, allow ourselves uh, to be impressed. You know, um, 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 and for us to for, for people to listen to music and and one of my most peaceful things and I recommend everybody have the ability to do something like this is my, my break from from reality is choosing a favorite song of mine, laying on my bedroom floor with my headphones on, <laughs> doing nothing else but just listening to one song. It's only three and a half minutes, but to just focus on that one song and let everything kind of bleed out. I realized that when I did that for the first time, I listened to a song called Destiny by Zero Seven. I had listened to that song a thousand times, but I had never heard it before. When I did that and I just sat down on my bedroom floor, I laid down, I put my headphones on, I closed my eyes, all the lights were off, I was just laying there. And I put that song on and it was the only song on, it didn't go to another playlist or anything like that. And when it hit silence, I just let the silence linger and I just thought about what I had just gone, this journey that I had just gone on. And it was such an incredible experience and completely different, but I allowed myself to not be distracted by other things, to not be distracted by the phone or what's outside or the car or work. I, I let Destiny and Zero Seven be the pilot. It was completely the captain, but I had to release that control and allow myself to fall into that song. I think with something like with opera, most certainly it's, it's a huge let, uh, release of control to let this storyteller be your guide and allow them 
to kind of like navigate you through this incredible story that they're telling you in all aspects of emotion. You know, like you said, you weep when you listen to some of this, these songs. And if we allow ourselves to, music will definitely do that. You know, to, so for somebody to be able to connect to music that strongly and that moves your heart and soul, that can change a life and inspire another one. Yeah. Melinda, thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. We really, really appreciate the time that you that you've spent with us. You are you are incredibly inspirational to every single person that has been in this entire community chat. You're just blowing their mind more and more and more with what you've done, with what you have going on, with your outlook on life, your motivation, your inspiration has just been completely immeasurable. Absolutely immeasurable. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. So, so cool. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. And we'll nerd about Star Wars sometime, okay? Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys very, very much. That is, oh yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you wanna ask ask a question, Commodore? Yeah, so uh, one question that I, I really like to ask before, all of our guests. Before we go, we always like to wrap it with, uh, with something simple but profound. Simple but profound. Yeah, okay. it's 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 become a habit of mine, and I I want to I want to do it to our our guests as well. Uh, I want to ask you, what was the best part of your day today? Best part of my day. <laughs> it was kneading that bread, feeling that, and listening to um, and listening to music. I, I was I was listening to a particular Mozart aria and uh, working to that music and and it was wonderful. Um, it was just wonderful. So that was the best part of my day. I, I would love to be able to say it was when I was working on the short story, but that was work. And this other thing was was just a moment of being in the moment, you know. So I really, I really thank you for sharing that with us. I really awesome. like that answer because I can, I can picture just, just standing in the, in the house and, and needing bread and having that, that awesome music playing in the background. That was, so, so what a great answer. A very peaceful feeling, yeah. very serene, very yeah. just like everything is right with the world. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Everything is perfect. This is fantastic. What a great moment to be able to capture just, just to remember like that emotional uh, uh, content, that emotional feeling that you're feeling when all these things are happening, you're like, this is my happy place. I hope you remember that when you eat the bread. Yes, <laughs> and your bread looked fantastic. It, it looked it fantastic, was, Melinda. Thank well. you, <laughs> thank thank you, you so, guys thank so, you so much for sharing really that with us. That is so cool. Uh, Melinda, <laughs> we'll be in touch. We're going we're gonna to message you shortly after the show's over just to make sure everything is okay, see what you felt about it. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, and, and, and again, if there is anything that you have going on, whenever you're about to release something new, if you want to chat Star, Star Wars, if you want to chat any, anything at all, if you want to talk about bread recipes, let us know. You're an absolutely captivating guest. I, I would like love to have you back. I know the Commodore would, and I can guarantee you every single person that has been in here that has listened to an inkling of what you have had to say and share would absolutely love uh, to, to listen a little bit more about you. And not only uh, uh, are, would you be welcome back on here, but everybody in the chat, head to her Twitter page, head to her Facebook page, check out her Wikipedia, go to her.com, check out her IMDb. Follow this incredible creator. Uh, you are sitting and watching an interview take place between two goofballs and an absolute queen of creation. Uh, huge, huge shout out to, uh, to Melinda for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, love. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic and, and night. Someday I hope I can throw axes with you at the, at the axe throwing place. That sounded amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you can throw axes with Billy. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are, are awesome, and thank you. I so enjoyed, um, you know, sitting in on the show, and thank you for this wonderful interview. I really appreciate it. You guys have a good evening. Thank Absolutely. you. We had a great time. Awesome. Good night. You too, Melinda. Take care, love. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye, Bye dear. Man. Wow. How awesome was that? That was pretty awesome. I and, and and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, let's 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 just be let's just be nice and tight on this one. Good structure. I know she's super busy. Let's see if we can keep it to under an hour. We blew past an hour, and I'm just so captivated by what she has to I say. I didn't even look up until it was 55 minutes. I'm like, oh my god. So captivated by what she has to say. What an incredible what an not only just an incredible guest. I don't I don't want to, to downplay it, like, but just an incredible human being. I love I love it when when um not necessarily they say something or like I just hear something that I totally wasn't expecting. 
and I love it when that happens. Yeah. That happened a couple times tonight. Yeah, she, she did a couple things where I was just like, man, incredible. <laughs> and I liked how she had her PSA. She was like, listen, just because I went and I got a law degree and I don't use it, I'm not saying don't go to school. Go to school. Get your education. Focus yeah. on that because everything you learn, try it. You will have the ability to use in the future. Yeah. When people oh, are like, yeah. I don't know why I took that. That was a waste oh, of yeah. time because I didn't do this. It's like, yeah, but you never know when you're going to use that thing that you learned that you thought you'd never, ever use. You never know when that opportunity is going to come up, and you're going to be like, I'm really glad I paid attention that day. I, I could easily say I spent 20 years in the hospitality industry being a server, bartender, manager in restaurants, and I could easily say that I wasted my 20s, but I learned a lot yeah. <laughs> yeah. from waiting tables. Oh, man, big time. Big I learned time. a lot of patience. I learned a lot of uh, uh, prioritization, in on-the-fly prioritization. Yeah. Uh, I learned how to move on my feet and to help each other out. I learned a lot of conflict resolution. Yeah, uh, just by trial and error. I learned how to how to how to recognize different personalities. I learned how to deal with those personalities. Yeah, you know, I learned a lot. Oh yeah, and even though you're not in the restaurant industry anymore, you still carried a lot of what you learned into life today. And that's one of those things that for I was sure. I was really really good at. And I'm yeah. like, well, why don't I make this my career? I was a manager for less than a year. Yeah, and you I was tried like, it. This is not for me. Yeah, you tried it. I tried. And it. that's another and thing that, that was really inspirational to me when I was reading about what she's done. She walked away. She walked away. She was a great singer, but she wasn't extraordinary. So she walked away. That realization, just that one thing, that realization right there, sounds easy. Oh, you walked away. What's, how's that so hard? Really? Like, if you've ever walked away from something you're great at because you're not extraordinary and you've abandoned that to try a brand new journey, that takes courage. Oh, yeah. That takes courage. Oh, yeah. She not only did it with music, she did it with law. I, I heard in an interview one time that a doctor had – he had went through all of his college and then all of his – all of his medical training, like 10 years of school to be a doctor. And then after that, he's like, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to do this anymore. And, and he done. kept getting this argument from people like, you are wasting all of that time nope. that you spent in the medical. Like, no. Yeah. No, I, I learned all that stuff. I still know all that stuff. But I don't want to do that. Yeah. And they I didn't on. waste it. I, can, I, I, you know what I, a waste would I be? met someone that did yeah. the same thing. A That's waste would crazy. be staying in a career you don't love or you're not happy with or that drives you crazy for 30 years. That, that, like, that, 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 to me, that would be a, a waste. Your job, our, my responsibility for, that I feel is to make is to be happy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And if I spend 10 years doing something I'm not happy doing just because I feel like I have to do it because I got an education in it 20 years ago, that to me, that, that, I mean, I try not to look at things as a waste of time, but that would, to me, that would be a waste of time. That's just crazy. Carlos, uh, you can actually pick six guitar strings, and you're quite phenomenal at it, so that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, okay. Car Carlos is talking okay. himself down right now. Carlos okay. Trujillo is a fantastic musician, absolutely okay. fantastic. Here's a, a really good quote that went up. Uh, Shelly Wheeler said, live before you go back to star stuff. That's right. Do it all. <laughs> we are we are all stardust, right? That's, that's that whole idea. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred. And if we are all created by the cosmos, we will one day return to the cosmos. You guys have a fantastic night, man. That was fun. Uh, th actually, I want to suggest one more thing. Oh, ooh, do it. If do you it, do, do it. have a hobby or you have something that yeah. you think could be your passion, yeah, uh, I've got a I've got a book that you might want to read. And email us. It's uh, yes, email us at kitchenkillersgmail.com. <laughs> do those two things. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought you were going, so I wanted to find the comment. Okay, there I'm like, it is. oh yeah, he's gonna ask him to email us. Email, but email <laughs> us at kitchenkillersgmail.com. But however, you are taking um, it in a different direction, which is also a fantastic direction. Uh, is a it's a book called Choose Yourself by James Altucher. Very very great writer. He's uh, very humorous. Um, it's a very easy read. I was I, I just kept going chapter and the chapters are small. So if you just got five minutes, you can read one chapter and take some value from it. But uh, there's a lot of value in that book. And uh, uh, if you're if you're pursuing a passion, if you have something you're really good at and you want to take it further and you don't know how to do that, uh, that's a very good book to uh, start with. So check that out. Uh, Shelly Wheeler says, stop picking on yourself, Carlos. Get it? Keep it to the strings. <laughs> She's always there. Oh, man. She's oh, yeah. Let's, 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 we're, we're, you were doing a snapshot selfie. Is that what we're trying to do? Well, I, I wanted right to do there. it with the, with the guest. Oh, well, we can't do that now, but That's we can. Right. I mean, we can do that previously because we have we'll Shelly Wheeler and she's we'll incredible. Just, she we'll can just, scrub and we'll take. Both take we're going we're gonna to do a snapshot selfie, so we're just going to look at the camera awkwardly for about a second. We're trying new stuff. Okay. And that was fantastic. It. Good job, everybody. <laughs>
<laughs> well done. We remembered that one. You guys have a really good night, man. Thank you for spending some time with us. It is Monday, which is weird because we were off today. I feel like it's Sunday and we're doing a weird stream, but it's totally fine. I Thank found that it, having two days off in yeah. a row is okay, but yeah. three days off in a row, I'm like, I want to take a week off yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go back to work yet. We have a poll going up tomorrow at 12 o'clock with five songs on them. You guys vote on them Wednesday night. We're going to be playing them at 7.05. I hope you guys join us. And we are hopefully headed to Jennifer Ward Hall's house this Friday to crash a remote kitchen. Uh, right. Jennifer is an incredible creator, an amazing individual, and one hell of a singer as well. So we're going to see if we can get her to uh, duet with us on some of these tunes. You guys have a really good night. Stay out of trouble. Any last words for him, Commodore? No, that's it. All set? Sweet, baby. You guys have a really good night. I'm going to give you one of these. Oh, yeah, that's right. Check that out. Bye. If you have any questions, a huge shout-out to Wayne Dench Incorporated, EMS Mobile Detailing, Casador Studios, Turnitori's Cafe and Pizzeria, and Lakeland Barbecue, and Lakeland Ice Cream Company. If you guys are looking for some social media, find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, Patreon, and KitchenKillers at gmail.com. What you got for him, Commodore? That's it. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. You guys have a fantastic night. Stay out of trouble. Live long and prosper. We will see you Wednesday at 7.05. Bye. That's right, baby. We'll see you soon. You guys have a good night. Pizza. <laughs>